Thanks. I'm Connie Buckingham Chasse, and this is my 44th summer at Clyde's Christian Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> But, and how about Scott Brownson? He was just this little two-year-old when I was a crew girl, and he was so annoying. And now look at him. I just love him. I love his music, and I, I hope you appreciated that this morning. I also love God the way he had Harvey share Lamentations 323, and that song, Strength for, Today, Strength for Today, that Scott wrote, he based on that hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is based on that scripture. So God's pretty cool the way he puts those things together. Um, last night, Gene Getz said some things I'm not sure he should have said about Paul and me, and, and now here I am with lots of me's and I's, and I did this and me that, but as you're listening to my testimony, I want you to think and remember that this is about God, what God has done here at Clydehurst, through, maybe through me and Paul, but it's not about us, it's about him, I, and I just want you to know our hearts that you weren't supposed to say that stuff. <laughs> And we want God to get the glory. It's all about God, okay? So like many of you, I grew up in a loving Christian home and accepted Christ at the age of six. And um, I'm pretty sure that my first summer at Clyders when I was seven was one of Lena Judy's first summers too, if not the first. I, I'm a little, I might be off on my dates. So anyway, that's pretty, pretty cool. Coming to camp each summer was a big deal. And um, actually, Debbie Zimmerman Amarud was my counselor my first summer at camp. So I'm going to drop a lot of names here. I may miss, all of you have had such an impact on me and on many people here, but I just like to stick in names that have special significance here and there. So forgive me if I don't mention your name, but anyway. Um, uh, it was also a special treat yesterday to visit with one of my counselors when I was in junior high. My counselor was Chris Bartlett Heathco, and she's here today. She still means so much to me, even after 38 years. It was really great to reconnect with them. Um, another bonus at growing up as a really young child um, is that my dad was, Ron Buckingham, was a good friend of Wayne's, and Ron loved Clyde Hurst very much, too, and spent a lot of time up here volunteering and um, helping with all the many projects. Boy, there was a lot of work back then. It was hard work, wasn't it, Wayne? <laughs> And, um, he, and I would tag along with my dad as he helped. And my sister and I also loved coming along when my dad brought up his 1950 Chevy pickup, Timothy truck, and for the annual trek to Blue Lake with the staff each summer. I started working on staff as a crew girl in 1978 at age 14, before you had to be 15 to work here. And this helped me grow spiritually, but also built and shaped my character as I learned what it meant to work hard and have a servant's heart and attitude. Anthony Overcast's grandmother, Sharon, was, my, was the head cook when I was a crew girl, and I learned much from her then, and she continues to mentor and encourage me now. <clears throat> um, on a side note, during, during training week, Holly had us gather into little groups of three, and we were supposed to share in that little group our most impactful experience at camp. And I was grouped with Nate Shug and Tim Hatton, and Tim started off, he said that what impacted him most was the godly example of his crew leaders when he was here working as a crew boy. Nate said, that's pretty cool, because his most impactful experience at camp was what he learned from his crew leaders when he was on high school staff. When it was my turn, I said, you guys have to believe me. I had my answer ready before either of you said anything, <laughs> because my answer is exactly the same as yours. And it was Matt and Chris Heathcote who were my crew leaders when I was on high school staff. And this is what Paul and I call the hidden ministry of Clydehurst, the impact that it has on the high school and college age kids and on the adults too, who come here and spend their summer serving and learning together. My summer as a counselor in 1982 is what gave me a love for children's ministry, which I continue to be involved in to this day, particularly in the ministry of Awana clubs. Um, back then, one of the requirements to be hired as a counselor was to have had at least one year of Bible college, and this requirement, plus some strong encouragement from my parents, is what led me to attend Multnomah Bible College in Portland, Oregon, where I met an amazing man named Paul Chasse. After we were married and started our family, we were able to be on the receiving end here at Clyders as we were blessed each summer at family camp. Counselors like Scott and Carla Brownson, Nate and Sarah Shug, and Greg and Michelle Hartman <clears throat> loved on our kids while we enjoyed much needed times of refreshment in the Word and in the beauty of our God's creation. 
I've always loved coming to camp, not just because it's fun, which it is, but because here I have received truths and tools that I needed to face the challenges that life would inevitably bring. One particular trial was when I lost my father. My dad committed suicide when I was a young mom with an 18-month-old and another child on the way. Just prior to this, we had passed through another devastating trial. I felt like I had barely come up for air when I was plunged under again. It was a terrifically difficult time for Paul, me, my mom, and my sister and her husband. That summer, Paul and I went to family camp as usual. My heart was so broken with grief, sorry, that I sought out the speaker, Craig Massey, for a brief counseling session. The burning question on my mind, why wasn't God's grace sufficient for my dad? I was thinking of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, so why wasn't that sufficient for my dad? He was very kind and sympathetic, but his answer was brutally honest. God's grace was sufficient. My dad just chose not to tap into it. That answer was hard to hear, but the truth helped my heart begin to heal. I continued to grieve, but I made sure that I availed myself of that grace that God so freely gives when I trust Him and obey His word. So, I just would like to close with this scripture from Romans 5, which, which speaks of the hope that we have in Christ, which is so wonderful when there's so many trials and tribulations on this earth that we can cling to that hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces per perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. And then my final thing is the, the, the hymn, Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, never fear.